Alright guys and welcome back to the Little Lawn Gaming channel. Today we are doing another experiment on the F1 2021 video game. We are adding Porsche into the My Team Career Mode and basically seeing whether they can create a total winning car. Constructors will be a bit difficult because Jensen Button who I've created as the character that I would have played as will always be starting last. But they could still create a driver champion quite easily with a good car. I got this idea from CF Racing, he is really good and I will be linking the video and his channel in the description, he's well worth a watch, so if you feel like going to watch after you've seen this one, feel free to click on that link. For Porsche, I've given them the Ferrari engine and Luca Giotto as Button's teammate. The first season I'm expecting to be very difficult, hardly any points, probably no points for them. But all in all, we're going to see as well what happens with all the other drivers and what other movements happen. Obviously, Luca Giotto isn't going to be here to the end. But anyway, let's see what happened in Season 1. So, Season 1 was won by Valtteri Bottas, 12 points ahead of Lewis Hamilton in the end. It was quite comfortable for Mercedes overall, so they picked up the constructors as well. Nine victories for Bottas this season, nine victories for Lewis Hamilton. Verstappen coming in with two for Red Bull. He would have been hoping for more. He unfortunately didn't get them. Leclerc and Norris both getting a race victory. Each shocking race victories as well. Leclerc winning the last race of the season. So Ferrari will hope that's a sign for season two. Porsche struggled this season. Not a single point on the board. It will be interesting to see how long it takes for them to get to a point where they can start to gain points. Luca Giotto, is he going to be the driver to help them to do that? In real realism, probably not. He's not a great driver. Once he leaves, he'll probably stay in F1, but I can't see him going to the higher tiers. Probably more like your Haas, Williams, Alfa Romeo kind of tier. And on to season two we go, where we had some driver changes. Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Räikkönen both retired, which meant Giovinazzi moved to Aston Martin. Russell then went to fill Giovinazzi's place at Alfa Romeo, and Latifi went to fill Kimi Räikkönen's place at Alfa Romeo, so basically Williams moving to Alfa essentially. Callum Eilat and Lungard both came in to fill the void at Williams. That meant all remaining seats were taken. They didn't really change much. Mercedes dominant yet again. Lewis Hamilton though, this time winning the championships, also 12 points ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Although this season, he got 12 wins to Bottas's seven compared to where they were both on nine last year. Verstappen once again with just the two victories. Leclerc picking up a victory. The only one who didn't get his victory was Lando Norris. Mercedes looking very strong in the early goings here. Two Constructors' Championships and a combined 37 race victories. Yeah, they look formidable at the moment. Can they carry it on to Season 3? And in Season 3, we had more driver movement. Alonso decided to retire now, and that meant George Russell moved for the second time in two seasons as he went and joined Alpine. Schumacher moved to Porsche after Giotto left to replace Russell at Alfa Romeo. Eulot then moved to Haas to replace Schumacher, and Guan Yu Zhou came in at Williams for Eulot. In terms of the season though, Red Bull, very, very strong. Max Verstappen, the driver's champion this year. Red Bull, the constructor's champion. Look at them both on top there and comfortably on top as well. Max Verstappen picking up 15 race victories, which is insane. Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas picking up two each for Mercedes. Pierre Gasly. The Alfa Tauri's having a good season, picking up two race victories. Charles Leclerc picking up just the one race victory for him. And Sergio Perez, also in a Red Bull, let's not forget, only picking up the one victory compared to his teammate who had 15. That is ridiculous. Porsche still tumbling along. No points yet. They're struggling, to be honest. They have one of the worst cars on the grid at this point. I believe they're only quicker than Haas. So... It's going to be a long haul for them to get anywhere near the front at this stage. And as Season 4 comes around, there is just the two moves. And it's a direct switch. Schumacher refused a contract at Porsche. So Lando Norris was brought in. And it just meant Schumacher took that empty seat at McLaren. And Red Bull 
aren't relinquishing their hold on this title just yet. They win the Constructors yet again, and Max Verstappen wins the drivers. But Max Verstappen doesn't just win the drivers. He dominates the drivers' championship. 19 race victories out of 23. Let that sink in. 19 out of 23. That is insane from Max Verstappen. And at this rate, he's not going to lose another championship. He is on the form of his life. He's the best there is at the moment. Pierre Gasly picking up three of the other four. And Charles Leclerc got the other race victory. I believe he's had a race victory every season so far, Charles. And in a Ferrari that isn't exactly performing great. That's, that's decent. That's very decent. And as we hit season five, there are no driver changes, but there is one dramatic change. Porsche are competitive. They're very competitive. In fact, they're so competitive, they've had their first race victory. Lando Norris picking it up for the team. Even Jensen Button starting at the back of the grid manages to pick up 22 points this season. I can't let that detract from the fact that Max Verstappen's got his third consecutive driver's championship. Red Bull have their third consecutive Constructors' Championship. And they've only dropped one more race than they did last year. 18 race victories for Max Verstappen this season. Pierre Gasly with three. Leclerc with one. And Norris with one. It's going to be very interesting to see if Porsche can start to close that gap up to the Red Bull. And if Norris can take the fight to Verstappen. Because if there's a driver on that grid that can, it's probably Lando. And in Season 6, we have more driver movement. Lewis Hamilton has retired from Formula 1, which meant Ricciardo moved to Mercedes. Giovinazzi moved to McLaren. Latifi went to Aston Martin. Mazepin went to Alfa Romeo. And Jack Aitken was brought up into Haas. In terms of the season, we've got massive, massive news. Porsche are a competitive, front-running, potential title-winning car. They didn't win the title, but they could do. Max Verstappen won the driver's title once again, just 16 points ahead of Lando Norris in that Porsche show, and the constructors did go to Red Bull. However, the wins is where the interesting reading is. Lando Norris won 11 races, the most of any driver this season. Max Verstappen managed to get eight race victories. Leclerc, two, Gasly, one, and Giovinazzi, of all people, picking one up in that McLaren. Now, Lando Norris has 13 race victories in his career, which is nothing compared to Max Verstappen, who's got 64, but 12 of those have come in a Porsche now. That is showing the progression this Porsche is making, and I think soon we may well see Lando Norris, a world champion, in a Porsche. And the driver market doesn't quieten down in Season 7 either. Pierre Gasly retires from Formula 1. Giovinazzi then moves yet again to Alpha Tauri now. Stroll goes to McLaren. Guan Yu Zhou moves to Aston Martin. Callum Eilock goes back to Williams. And that means Dan Ticktum is drafted in at Haas. Max Verstappen wins the Drivers' Championship yet again. This time there's a bit of a bigger gap to Norris but Norris is second and Norris picks up another 10 victories in that Porsche Verstappen 11 victories this season Giovinazzi has won in that Alfa Tauri and Lance Stroll won in that McLaren it's going to be interesting Norris is pushing as much as he can he's pushing hard but at the moment the car seems to be letting him down it's DNFs that are costing him a proper shot at this world championship 23 race victories though in in his career 22 of which have come in the Porsche he's just got to try and overthrow that Max Verstappen wonder what's going to happen in season 8 so in season 8 there are no driver changes and unfortunately there are no changes in terms of who's winning the championships it's Max Verstappen yet again it's six on the trot for Max Verstappen it's six on the trot for Red Bull but once again Lando Norris finishes the season as the driver with the most race victories 10 race victories for Lando Norris seven for Max Verstappen three for Antonio Giovinazzi in the Alpha Tauri which is seemingly getting quicker and quicker season on season at the moment Leclerc picked up a race victory in his Ferrari Mick Schumacher, there's a proud moment, picks up a race victory in a McLaren. 
George Russell gets his first race victory in an Alpine. And right now, I'm looking at Max Verstappen with his 82 race victories. He's got two seasons left. Can he reach 100 race victories in Formula 1? That will be very interesting to find out. And in season 9, Lando Norris is not challenging for the World Championship. Lando Norris has retired from Formula 1, which meant George Russell moved to Porsche. Carlos Sainz moved to Alpine. Nicholas Latifi went to Ferrari. And Robert Schwartzman was drafted in by Aston Martin. And to be fair, on the form of Max Verstappen this season, I don't think Lando would have competed 11 race victories as he went on to win his 7th Drivers' Championship and Red Bull winning their 7th Constructors' Championship. Giovinazzi's there with 4 race victories to his name. George Russell picked up 4 in a Porsche. Perez is there with another 2 for Red Bull. Ricciardo picking up his first race victory. And Mercedes' first race victory for a very long time. Carlos Sainz picking one up in the Alpine as well. Giovinazzi finished 11 points behind Max Verstappen, having won 7 less races. He'd never finished outside the top 4 all season, and that sort of consistency makes him a threat going into Season 10. Let's find out if he manages to throw Max. And in Season 10... I was unable to get a picture of the leaderboard at the end. However, I was keeping track of race victories during the course of the season. And Antonio Giovinazzi is the driver's world champion. And it's by three points from George Russell. And I think that was eight points back to Max Verstappen. It was an incredibly tight season all year round and George Russell can sit there and be proud. He gave it everything, but unfortunately the consistency of Antonio Giovinazzi in that Alfa Tauri, nine race victories, Red Bull pick up the Constructors yet again. So that's eight out of the 10 seasons that Red Bull have won the Constructors. Max Verstappen only picking up six race victories this season and it means he does fall short of winning 100 races during this experiment. He wins 99. I'm sure he won't complain too much about that. Ricciardo bagged another race victory. And Russell took his race total to 12 wins. All in all, Antonio Giovinazzi winning the last season is actually quite shocking. I was pretty sure Max Verstappen was going to win it again. In the end, he finished third. It's been an incredible experiment. Porsche may not have been able to provide a title winning car but that's, is that just because Red Bull was so good and they were so good for so long they came close Porsche they came very close three points away in the final season and they were close a couple of times with Lando Norris who I thought was going to be the guy that was going to win the world championship I've really enjoyed it I want to thank CF Racing once again for giving me the inspiration to kind of try this and maybe not put my own take on it but show what I find out when I do it. I've tried to change the design a little bit of how I do it, we'll see. But if you have enjoyed it, please drop it a like and give us a subscribe. Don't forget to check out CF Racing and I'll catch you guys later.